Right, well, let's get, let's get started. Um, we are here again for another uh, ACF Chat Fridays. Um, we have got a big load of people from WP Engine here. I'm Ian, the product manager. We've got Matt and Ant from the engineering team and Brian, who's the engineering manager. We've got Mike Davey from Content and Damon, he is from DevRel. Um, and, sorry, we have, um, oh, Good. We have now three people that are not WP Engine employees, which is nice. So we've got Deb, Diego, and Kevin. And considering this is, you know, it's mid-December, mid, mid -December, mid ish feels Christmassy. We're obviously not going to have a huge session uh, of attendees. So, yeah, let's kind of disregard the usual Q&A format. If you've got questions, hit us, unmute please let's start a conversation what's going on what's what's um either troubling you with acf at the moment what, what are you working on um and let's exhaust your com your questions and then we see where we are oh we've got a few more people cool so yeah i mean usual things to apply if you want to use the chat fine that'd be great if you want to use the q a but please feel free to unmute and we can we can get started I don't think there's actually anything from our product point of view, um, just to kick things off, I guess. We've the current version is 6.2.4, which was a, a bug fix release. We are not planning to do any more releases until the new year, just to make it easier for updates around the holiday period. Um, uh, but we'll be back in January um, with probably another bug fix release and working so hard on 6.3, which will hopefully be coming at the first part of Q1 next year. Um, so yeah, does anyone want to kick us off? Anything going on? I could I could mention a couple of things that I've been working on recently. I haven't. Last time I joined you guys was a few months ago, and I had uh, it was off the back of a, a big release, and and we had some really useful conversations about um about how things are working. So I've been working on a couple of um uh scenarios recently. And one, I mean, and I don't think actually I think I've sort of solved them, and and actually I, I dare say they're probably not on the roadmap, but. I'll, I thought it'd be interesting to just bring them up anyway. So one of the things that I've been working on was um, I built, um, and I've been chatting with people in the ACF forum about this, I built a, a block, like a flexible block with some baked in um, forms, ACF forms. So it worked quite nicely in the block editor where um, you could insert the block. You've got your little ACF um, options in, this, in the sidebar and you can choose which form. And then you could do things like, uh, you know, choose the button text, whether it added a consent, whether it added an email, um, um, opt-in and it was working really, really nicely. But one of the big things that I came up against was um, Ajax validation in that if you're rendering a form, an ACF form in the back end, and you try and save that page, all of the fields fail validation if they're not filled in. Um, so this was a really tricky thing. And I'd, I thought I'd got around it originally by um using um the load field filter and i was saying basically you know if you're in the admin um and it's this form just just set um mandatory to required to to false which worked to a point until i realized that then on the front end and it was to do with admin ajax i don't fully understand what but then it was preventing ajax validation from working so so um if your if my field uh failed validation instead of it saying you must fill in this field with a little red flag it took me out to a whole new, another page just saying this has failed you need to you need to fill in this form and i went round and round in circles with this and, and actually i found someone asking the exact same question on the acf extended forum and the solution that they gave was don't render your forms in the block editor which was which was a real shame because it was really nice that it was it was building out the form in real time as the user selects the options, which form, which instance of the form they want, what colors they want to use, what opt-ins they want. And, the, and it was updating really nicely. They saw what they were going to get. So to backpedal from that and I mean, you might as well be using a short code if you're not going to render the form in the in the block. Now, I have solved it using the using a um, JS filter, but I dare say it's a little bit um, heavy handed and it wasn't. I, well, I didn't find it sort of well discussed much online it's quite hard to arrive at that solution so anyway it's not really a question i just thought i'd sort of raise it because this idea of rendering um forms in the block editor i was quite excited about it's the first time i've gone to these these lengths to create this block um but then it all kind of sort of fell apart with the issue of um of validation there wasn't a very good way to detect 
whether the form was being rendered like is admin didn't work because something to do with it with admin ajax um also didn't work if you did like um is rest or doing ajax none of this really worked or they conflicted because saving the post in the back end was the set you was using the same ajax validation as it was on the front end so you couldn't really differentiate between those two different instances effectively um so yeah that's something that i've been working on which was interesting to me well that's really it's really good good to hear kevin thanks for sharing i think our acf form submission sort of process is a bit buggy in the sense that we've had uh instances where the form's been used on the front end um and it's either being triggered by another submit um process or it's triggering somebody else's submit process um and so i think it's not it like obviously when you're in the editor and you hit save post that is a submit trigger mm. that we then listen to and go oh you haven't submitted this form actually and there is no context awareness that you're actually in the editor nobody's really submitting your form because you're just sh showing it to the editors mm. um so i think yeah we we probably will make a note of that and try and try and at least make sure acf forms just don't have a submit handler i guess in the block editor because mm -hmm. that that really isn't you know where we where we want to we want to be submitting data yeah um, well when you say it that way it sounds it sounds really simple actually like yeah because you're never going to need i'm never going to need anyone to fill out a form in the in the block editor you just want it to look like a form basically. just want it to look like a form yeah and, it, yeah. Even, and it's much nicer now actually that, that that it's even it shows which ones are mandatory so they're getting that 100 percent. this is what it's going to look like on the front end you know, because there might be a case where we want to say, oh, do you want to make this mandatory? And that would also change in the block editor. Yeah. Um, but it's potential to build like a really flexible um, yeah, form block. I don't personally like giving, I don't have great experience giving clients access to drag and drop form editors. They can never quite get the appearance just as, as you do in the design. So if we've worked with a designer and they've got a form looking just as they want it to, giving them a handful of pre-baked forms um, is, is sort of preferable. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, the ACF form feature i guess as it is, is is something that i when i was an acf user before even working with the product i i, I didn't even use it i didn't even know about it and i feel like it's something that not many people know about as much and we don't we don't kind of market it as the big thing and it was but actually it's really useful and it is for those reasons that you just said that you don't always want to use a big form builder plugin mm. um, you want to give people a form that you've controlled through the field definitions. Um, and I think, yeah, we've, I, I've been speaking to people more and more about the form, ACF forms. So I think we do need to kind of not necessarily like, I don't know, add, add a ton of engineering just to make it like this fantastical thing, but actually just shore it up a little bit because mm. it's, it's been built a while ago, pre WP engine, pre delicious brains, and it hasn't had much love and it, now in the block editor you know we're having things like this that need to be fixed so yeah i i, I do think um there's a, there's a few people that use it so and and we should give it a bit of love for different for sure I, I i use it a lot i use it on on almost every project i i work on i would say and it has got become my go-to for building contact forms so so you know also and then using acf save post to usually um uh write a you know a, uh, like a submission post type and record those submissions in the back end um, and then using it to hook into various different, um, you know, third party um, um, APIs and stuff as well. So in fact, I've got a website that I do for a, a client that exports pets and we use a pretty ginormous ACF form. Actually, it's a load of ACF form bolted together. We build them in different sections and bolt them together. Um, and, and that works really, really well for us. And it's, yeah, it's, it's talking to all kinds of different systems. Um, but because it, you know, the appearance is all taken care of, um, um, you know, you've got like validation built in um, through ACF form head. So I find it really useful. I did try and use it recently. I wanted to build um, a search, uh, like a filter block. Um, and I tried to do that with ACF form, but it didn't get off the ground at all, just because the whole kind of backbone of ACF, of what ACF form was doing was submitting that form and then reloading the page. And there was no way of then taking what had been submitted or I didn't find at the time find anywhere taking what had been submitted and then using that on page reload to, to, um, you know, like affect the query, for instance. Mm. Um, 
so I just built it using you know normal form elements, but it would have been nice to do that with ACF form as well. Um, but yeah, but I yeah I use it a great deal. Yeah, that's really interesting. I wonder if people, anybody else who uses the ACF form functionality, like just drop it in the chat. Just give us a let us know out of the I don't know, seven or eight people here. Like, what's the what's the percentage of people using it? Um, but it, it is one of these things that you have to find it in our docs. Like it's not obvious. We don't, we don't make it clear from a, an onboarding perspective. We don't, we don't shout about it on the homepage very much. It's very much a, uh, I don't know. It's like a developer thing that it's just hidden away in our documentation, but, but still, as you say, super powerful. Yeah. Uh, ACF extended makes quite a big, big deal of it in the back end. Then they've got like a whole section for building, building ACF forms specifically. And like, you know, a repeater where you can add, Add different hooks and functions onto your form, like send an email here and do this. Um, and ACF ACF extends amazing. I, I find myself really often building it, installing it during development, but then not going live with it because I'm using one tiny little aspect of it, and it seems like there's a, a lot in there. And I'll usually then just kind of bake, you know, custom code that little bit of functionality and build that into my plugin. Um, but yeah, they they do a lot with ACF, a whole a whole section on building forms in the back end, which is really useful. Yeah, they've. I think they've. They've definitely taken the approach of let's let's look at something that's there and try to improve it based on real world usage. Because I, I know Conrad, who's the ACF extended developer, who worked for an agency, and I think he was heavily using ACF forms for for contact forms, not using a form plugin, and then mm -hmm. kind of went down that road of, well, I need conditional logic now. I need this. I need that. And and you're adding bits on to kind of compete functionality wise with the form builder plugin. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. ACF extended is definitely a big, vast array of things yeah. that you perhaps won't need everything of. Um, but yeah, it, there's there's definitely enhancements there in that plugin. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got some stuff in the Q and A, which is nice. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think we got two. Deb has asked, are there any plans in the future to have a more drag and drop interface for creating ACF blocks? The recent updates have been very useful, creating options pages, integrating CPTs, taxonomy creation. Yes, is the answer to that. Um, ACF blocks is probably the last now remaining thing where in ACF you have to do that registration of a block in code. Um, and we are planning and trying to work out the best way to, to uh, implement it, but a UI for creating blocks. And I think that would be a really good addition to ACF Pro because it's, yeah, ACF blocks essentially are a block.json file and a PHP template. But the block.json has a ton of configuration options that aren't very clear. Um, it, we inherit the block.json structure from WordPress for WordPress block creation, but there's not a very easy documentation around that. Uh, and yeah, the, the settings, the screens that we put in place for registering taxonomies, post types, and options pages, I, I believe are really, really helpful for users because they're helpful for users who don't quite know what they want to do with it. And there's they're helpful for users who want access to the whole kitchen sink of array of options and settings and that you can use our our screens to say yeah just give me the simple stuff and now show me everything and that's a really good way to get exposure to those settings to know what you want uh, for your options page or your post type and if we do the same for blocks i think it'll be super powerful so i presume that's a thumbs up from you dev on that feature and hopefully that will be coming some point next year Brilliant. Thanks, Deb. Uh, Diego, you have asked, regarding the ACF JavaScript API, is there any plans to maybe provide documentation on using the API with ACF blocks? Right now, I'm getting no values when using the API functions to get field data, no matter if I wait for the DOM to load. Maybe there is another way to enqueue the JavaScript in the block editor I'm not aware of. Oh, I might need some, we might need some more details. What um can you give us a scenario? What what's what's the thing that you're trying to achieve here? Okay. For example, 
uh, changing the value of the field depending on the previous field, changing the value. Okay. So just just so I'm working through the, the scenario in my head uh, out loud, you have created an ACF block with fields and you want to conditionally change another field field value in that block based on a previous field, but at the time that the person who is editing the page or post has dragged on the block and they're editing the, the data. Is that something different to, um, I guess it's not just showing and hiding fields. You're, you're actually saying changing the value of a field depending on the previous field. Yeah. I'm going to kind of shake my head in the direction of the engineers to think we can't do that right now. Yeah. I I haven't tested the JS API blocks for a while. Um, so that's something that I'd need to kind of refresh myself on. Um, I'm sure there is a way to get it working, but I do know that blocks are kind of different, especially depending on if they've been saved or not. Um, because if they haven't been saved, I mean, the block, the values pretty much just live in JSON at that point. Um, so I think probably if you want to shoot us an email or get in touch with us after the chat, I mean, we can definitely troubleshoot further and then uh, probably get this figured out. But yeah, it's just not something that I'm aware of off the top of my head. Is it even even a case of like, you know, the ACF JavaScript API feels very much like classic WordPress if you've got the fields on a classic editor screen? Are you having to, do you think we have to do stuff in the React side of things and actually full on customize um, the block editor to, to do those things and access those values and set those values. It might be something like issue. that. I think we still have the issue though of where you're inputting data and it's not yet saved. So conditionally doing something based on that needs to be on, I guess, when you're leaving focus hmm. of that field. I know they're, I know they're like, compatibility with the iframe for what uh 6.3 or something that since they converted everything into the iframe but i mean i know if there are um custom fields or you're using the blocks json api version 2 then you're opting out of the iframe which in theory should not um be a problem but yeah, it might have something to do with uh, just the the uh, order of operation there and getting things to communicate. Yeah, as Matt said, if you if we want to give us a drop us an email and um, even if you go through the support form on the uh, on the website and just say you know you came to a chat Fridays and we we're chatting to the engineers and we want to try and figure this out, then it can come to us and we, we can try and sort that out. Uh, no other questions at the moment, but I saw Eagle Eagle, you dropped a link to the advanced pro, uh, sorry, advanced forms pro. Yeah. That's a, another helpful, uh, extension, I guess, on ACF that makes it easier to build more front end for or more powerful front end forms with ACF. So that might be worth checking out. Uh, and, and Kevin, it might be, it might be better for, for you in the sense that it's more forms related rather than ACF extended being a whole load of stuff. Yes, I've I've come across that plugin actually, and, I, and again, I think I did use it, and then I ended up just um, um, rolling my own. But it was really useful, and it probably gave me some like new insights into ACF forms that I'd not been aware of before. And then I was like, oh, actually, I could quite easily do this do this myself in my um, in my plugin. But yeah, it's really good. Um, it's a really good plugin. Nice. Do you have some more yeah, questions? Go ahead and yeah, let's yeah. see. Yeah, I did. I did no, I actually, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hog all the uh, all the airtime. Um, um, yeah, I had two actually. I'm just writing down the second one, so I don't forget what was it. Oh yeah, it was. Um, now I think this has come up before, and it was like not on the roadmap at all. But it was this idea that you could that you could attach an a an ACF field to an existing block would be incredibly useful. And this the use case I keep coming up against is is um, which I'm amazed there isn't a core solution for this. Is I've been using the the query loop block extensively and creating uh, block variations and like, you know, kind of pre-query hooks to customize it in various ways and really incredibly useful. But the thing I keep coming up against is 
scenarios where someone wants to use a query block and specify what posts that query block will fetch. You know, for instance, you might be using a, a query block to loop over, over your post type of um, products, for instance. And yeah, you can say, give me six products or give me products in this category or order them this way. But you can't say, just give me this product, this product, and this product. And it, if, if there was a way, you know, to say, okay, I've made an ACF field and I just want to attach this to a, to a query loop block and then, and then pass that along to the query. That would be incredibly useful because it, ex, as I, I've not even, I've not even dug into it because it's too, too daunting, but the, the idea of extending the, um, the, the existing query loop, you know, um, options is, seems like quite a big job when I'm used to just, you know, going ACF do this. Um, it would be so useful to just say, you know, choose, uh, uh, you know, the context of the field and it would, you drop down blocks instead of it just showing your own blocks, maybe show you an ACF bl block type and say, show it on query loops. And it's a, uh, you know, post object. I can choose three posts and that's what will override my, um, my, you know, I'd have to do some backend stuff with the query to say, take my ACF value, but being able to attach meta, I guess, to a, to a WordPress core block, like a query loop, um, would be incredibly useful. Does that make sense? How I've explained that? Yeah. I, I've been watching um, Nick Diego has been doing a lot of work lately with extending core blocks and doing things like that. Um, he's somebody to look up and just kind of get some ideas of how that like flow of data can go. Um, but of course, you've got like the PHP side for the templates of ACF blocks. So inserting those might be a little bit tricky just because of that disconnect there. Mm. Um, but there, but there, there are some inspiring things out there right now because I, I think it's still kind of new this whole concept of extending core blocks just because there's like uh, patterns getting established right now. Um, but I feel like you could, uh, in the current state, use ACF fields with that with core blocks if you wanted to extend them and then do something in the front end with the field data. Mm -hmm. um, just not that I just don't think the ACF blocks being inserted as part of a core block might might be a little more tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I go straight into my other question? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I've I've got any any words of wisdom on that other question. I'm, that that's a bit beyond my technical abilities. Yeah, I mean the way that I've the way that I've solved it is a bit is a bit hacky. Where I've saved um, I've saved its post meta. So for instance, if we need um a block to show um, okay, so the the context was we had like um a a website with a load of um, members, and we had uh, a group, and there was a board for that group, like a like a, a board of kind of advisors, and we needed a block that would just show those board members. So the way that I've done it is I've used ACF to to um, have a, um, a a post object field on the group post type, where you select the the group members, and then that's saved as as post meta, and then I've made a block query block variation which and then i'm filtering the arguments for that variation and saying if this post meta exists override the query and just show me those just show me those things so i have done it with acf if you like but i'm attaching the the metadata to the to the post instead of to the block so that's kind of the way that i've gone about doing it which works which works for now it doesn't it doesn't render and doesn't show me the, res the correct results in the back end um at the moment but it works it works on the front end so that's that's kind of worked out but the other question might not really be an acf one at all uh, um uh and i asked this on another on another uh, um um full site editing um slack channel and it seems to me that when i'm when i've got my acf block and i've and i've configured my um um capabilities so i've said yes give it padding margin font size background color um, and then I get my block object. The way that those values are stored is is not in a way that's very easy to just say, right, I'm just going to iterate over this and output a string of inline styles. They're all stored in different places. You know, you've got, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's like, it's like spacing, padding, and then, you know, they have like the presets. And it feels like maybe... Um, there ought to be in WordPress or maybe in ACF, ACF a way to just say, take my block object and generate 
generate styles you know I'm every time going through quite a long-winded way of doing it saying okay so if this if this is in the block array do this if it's that okay iterate over these ones add those to the style object then check to see if these ones are set unless i'm missing something it seems it seems like um kind of a kind of a big job every time have i explained that i don't know if i'm explaining these things in a sensible way is that familiar yeah. well that, yeah that sounds it sounds a bit crazy that you have to do that like and I, i'm not that familiar with the block uh, like the data that's passed to the block, but yeah, that does sound arduous and uh, you know unnecessary. Mm. Are you using the get block or the yeah get block wrapper attributes on the front end? Because I feel like that helper is supposed to provide a lot of that. Oh really? No, I don't know that I am. So this is just yeah. So just in my does in that my... work in the front end? I've only ever used that in the editor side. Because on the front end, you're you're getting markup, so I'm not sure if the app wrapper attributes. Maybe it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might. I feel like we weren't we weren't we doing a blog post about something about this as well. Yeah, we we there's a post up on on trying to find it. I think and I guess some through. some of them need to be class names and some of them need to be inline styles. That's the other thing with with the nature of kind of theme.json and and variables. Um, yeah, there. Your when your your actual block your actual output is a, is a mixture right of of classes and then occasionally inline inline styles for some of the things um, and yeah I suppose it would just be really great if you had in that block object as well as having them all nested in their logical places if you just had here's your here's your classes here's your styles and then you can just tag those onto the block um, perhaps and that's something that I just thought might already exist but I don't think it does unless I'm missing something. Yeah, I mean it's hard to see. It should from... work. Yeah, Mike just uh, posted the link there. That's the one I was, I was trying to find it. <laughs> oh, this get get block wrapper attributes. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. So that yeah, okay, that makes sense that something does exist because it seems yeah. crazy that it wouldn't. Yes. Yeah. You yeah, know that. But there is a <laughs> there is a very distinct kind of a way you have to use it, and it's it's referenced in that post. Just so you just have to be mindful of the is preview um, check. That's all. But hopefully, yeah, that should get most of that stuff output for you. Amazing. Yeah, no, that's totally what I thought would exist. And I and I didn't know that it did. But that, yeah, wrapper attributes, class and style. Yeah, that looks like it could do the job. So that, yeah, that would work with an ACF in the context of an ACF block in a PHP template, do you think? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's exactly what what our documentation is about using it in yeah yes amazing CF documentation for the win it is it totally is in your documentation i just didn't read it nice cool nice thanks very much nice work damon and mike taking that for a spin <laughs> yeah cool All right i'll mute, i'll mute myself time Um, on the subject of things that you'd like to see, Deb asked obviously earlier about a, a UI or something for creating ACF blocks. Kevin has been talking about sort of improvements in ACF forms, I guess. Um, just a reminder to everyone, we have got the feedback board, uh, which is a public board where you can request features, improvements, or just tell us about things that are annoying you. And then obviously uh, you can vote on the thing, the posts that other people have made and people can vote on yours. And it gives us a bit of a, an indication of what things are, you know, annoying lots of people or what things are being requested by lots of people. And we can start to, you know, prioritize them accordingly. Um, I don't know if we've actually got, this is kind of, it's, I think it's got like, I don't know, a hundred odd posts on there, but it's obviously not our, it's not the uh, full list of ideas or things that are on our uh, backlog. So there might, I'm not sure if we've got the UI for blocks in there because I don't think we added it to there ourselves and nobody's, I'll register ACF blocks over UI. Yeah, that is on there. Um, so yeah, go ahead on there. But I, I mean, feel free to, if there's any anything else um, that you really want to see in ACF that's like a burning a burning desire to get in the plugin or, you know, that's something that's just been bugging you, um, you know, feel free to let us know now. We've got 15 minutes. I can't promise we'll get it in as soon as possible, but it feels like seasonal wish list 
I don't want to say I'm Father Christmas, but please let us know what you want. <laughs> but and go and go and have a look at that board afterwards and vote. Well, I think if uh, unless anyone has got anything else they want to ask or or want to chat about, I think we could probably wrap it up early and give people some time back. Um, okay. Let's just confirm when our next session is. Within the new year. Yeah, I, I was just double checking. I think this is the last one of December. Yeah, last one of twenty twenty three. Um, which is, yeah, so we'll be back, I think, on January the 5th for another session. Um, yeah, and I know there are definitely people here who have been to multiple sessions, so we really appreciate um, you guys showing up, coming to talk to us about ACF. Um, you know, we we really enjoyed talking to you and hearing about what you're building and what problems you've had. So, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming to these things. This is obviously something we, we started earlier on in the year as a new thing, um, and it feels like it's successful. I mean, you know, it's 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 actually quite nice when there's a smaller amount of people because we we can deeply talk about things and and solve problems. So I feel like as a successful measure or a measure of success, it it has been successful for. I think it's like this is the nineteenth session this year. Um, February third was our first one. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, and we've missed a few along the way just from you know time off and public holidays and whatnot but i think we've yeah it's it's been nice to sort of show up week after other week and see familiar faces and and have good chats so yeah we appreciate y'all and we will continue this in 2024 all righty well have a lovely weekend everyone and yeah as i said see you in 2024 have a good christmas or holiday season uh, and a good new year and we'll see you next time you too bye